I'll start over then. Uh, so good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Shaw. My presentation is on running uh, basically WebAssembly with Go, uh, running Go everywhere. Uh, so I actually changed my topic at a very last minute notice because one of the other speakers was doing a gRPC topic and I didn't want to be repetitive. So I apologize if, uh, if it's not as polished as it could be. So just give you a little bit background. Uh, so I ca came in here from Indonesia. I'm the founder of Go Jakarta. Uh, Go Jakarta is a pretty big Go meetup group, probably one of the biggest in the world. Uh, we're a monthly meetup group. Uh, this is our little mascot. Um, and uh, if you are, uh, so quick thanks to Jump Trading and to Go SG for hosting this tonight. If you are come out to Indonesia for some reason, please join our, our Go uh, community there. We've got Meetup, Telegram, Facebook groups, and other stuff. Um, I mean, it's pretty big, it's pretty active. So just a quick background about me. Uh, I'm the CTO and founder of Broncos. Broncos is a company that's 100% built using Go. Um, I'm also the CTO, former CTO of Multiply.com, if any of you guys remember that defunct social network. I've previously started and sold a bunch of technology companies, and I've lived in Asia since 2005, Indonesia since 2012, uh, and I'm the author of quite a few uh, popular open source Go packages, USQL, XO, Chrome DP, uh, and I started Go Jakarta, and I'm actually also the founder of Go Manila, by the way, but whatever, which uh, our first meetup is in like next week or something. So if you're in Manila, yeah, give me a call. Um, so just uh, go, go Jakarta. We've got slides. This is the magic URL. So as I said, I adapt. My, your, my pointer doesn't work. So here is the URL. It actually is go gettable. It should be up right now. Uh, my slides are on there on a previous one from a, as I, because I adapted this from a talk I did in January at Tokopedia. Um, oops. So basically, without further ado, I'll get into uh, running Go everywhere. So uh, as developers, we've talked about for years about the ideal. Like, what is the ideal development environment, right? Ideally, we would want some kind of magic system that ran everywhere on every platform, every operating system, every processor, everything, and it was simultaneously, you know, used very low memory, it was super fast and efficient and easy to write and easy to code and you could, you know, write once and run it everywhere, right? Um, so, you know, there's been a lot of attempts over the years to get to that, right? Um, ugh, sorry, this... So there's a lot of attempts that have, you know, over the years to get to that, right? Java, ActiveX, you know, Flash, list goes on and on and on. Um, basically, none of them have been very successful because they have really bad trade-offs uh, that basically prevents them from being usable everywhere, right? Uh, because they're either, you have the baggage of a giant runtime like, you know, Java, or they just really don't run on any platform, i.e., like, they only really only run on one platform, like, i.e., uh, COM. Um, I, so COM, I mean ActiveX. Uh, and, or there's just a myriad of the reasons, like, the, the syntax is just, you know, unmanageable, unless you have a PhD in, in, in programming languages. And for just a wide variety of, of, of other reasons, right? Which we don't need to belabor here. Um, so basically, it kind of comes down to these reasons for why they fail, which is complexity, proprietary, not standard, not cross-platform. The developers get tired. Like, it takes too many mental hurdles to deal with it. Like, if you've ever had to write an ActiveX, like, com object that's actually usable in anything but a browser, which I've actually had to do, it becomes problematic. Um, there's just performance issues. Uh, or basically, like, again, when it comes to ActiveX, there's platform exclusion. It doesn't work on OS X. It doesn't work on Linux. It doesn't work on, you know, iOS and Android, which, you know, is important. So 
That said, we get to Go. So Go is and has been for a while pretty close to almost the ideal. It's very fast. It, it compiles to basically every platform, every architecture. Uh, it's got a powerful standard library that genuinely works the same everywhere because it's all written in Go. It's not like Java where their standard library is written in C++ and then it doesn't work on some variant of FreeBSD the same way that it work, you know, the same way it does out on, you know, Windows or whatever, right? Um, it's extremely efficient. If you've ever seen the native code that, like the the actual assembly that's generated by Go, it's it's really uh, amazing. Like the 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 engineering that's gone into to Go's back end, like uh, is 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 phenomenal. It's well documented. It's open source. It's extremely easy to interface with existing code, C and C++ libraries. The only real thing that had been missing from Go until recently was basically a way to run in the browser. Okay? That's really the only thing that's been missing until now. Um, and that's, I'd like to happily tell you that if you're not aware with Go, since November of last year, Go will now run in a web browser in the exact same way that it runs on your console. Uh. All right, so how does Go accomplish this and how are any other programming languages going to accomplish this in the future? There is a new standard called WebAssembly, which is basically the successor to PNACL. Uh, if you're not familiar with PNACL, PNACL uh, is basically Google's attempt at doing a you know, non-ActiveX style you know, multi-platform cross-browser plugin solution and it just didn't work. The difference is, is that WebAssembly now has been built as a standard and it's now actually active in more than, this number has changed, it's actually 90% of browsers today. 90% of user agents today, active today as of, you know, April 3rd, 2018, is more than 90% available to, has availability for WebAssembly, right? So it's supported everywhere, Edge, Firefox, you name it, et cetera. Now, the point is, is that if we can get Go to somehow compile to WebAssembly, right, then we can now actually use Go everywhere. And in the same kind of performance characteristics that we've enjoyed as Go developers for building for Linux or for Windows or whatever it might be, we can now use the same in the web browser, all right? So there is an experimental branch by a guy called Nee Lance. That's his uh, GitHub username. Uh, it's available right now. And this is basically the magic. If you do this, if you, if you uh, know how to build Go from source or whatever, you basically have to build Go from source to do this. This is, the, this is all that it takes. There's nothing else that you need to do to get Go to compile the WSAM today. Now, um, I'm not a member of the Go team. I can't really try to suggest when it will be like actually included by default out of the box. If I had to guess, it'll probably be 1.12 uh, because I follow the Go source code pretty closely. It's not in 1.11. Uh, so it's, I can pretty confidently say it won't be in 1.11 unless they decide to make that like at a last ditch measure. But 1.12 or 1.13, so within the next six, eight, nine months, it will be there, and theoretically you could use it today. You can use it right now and get your code, just by doing this, you'll basically get a version of Go that will compile everywhere, and it will genuinely truly work everywhere. It'll work in a web browser, it will work on iOS, it will work on Android, it will work on Linux, it will work on Windows, all in the, exa the exact same way, okay? Um, and that's really what's really exciting about this to me, and, and one of the reasons why I'm invigorated about Go in general is about the tool chain and, and the, the parts that, are, that surround Go is really to me what's more exciting about Go uh, because it's, <laughs> it makes me, uh, I, I've been programming for a very long time, uh, it makes me actually excited to be a developer again, and I'm actually like happy to start using these tools again, as opposed to like 
having to pull out like a JVM combination and trying to, you know, build some giant Docker image or something or blah, 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 to, you know, get a deployable system everywhere. But with Go, you can now genuinely, truly build something that's simple, that has a simple, straightforward syntax, has a, a very robust standard library that works everywhere. Um, so, just to give you an example real quick, uh, so I apologize, I don't know what the audience is here. I typically speak, when I speak, I speak in Indonesia. Um, the audience there is, is very, very new to go, like, and that's why I'm like speaking as if you guys are brand new to go. I don't know what your level is or not. Uh, and this, this uh, talk was originally designed to get more developers interested in Go and using Go in general and, and about like getting, you know, people thinking about what you can do with Go, something that's not possible uh, today. So this is a very simple, you know, hello world using uh, Go. I'm sure you've seen something like it. The only thing I've added here is the runtime.goos, runtime.goarch, if you're not familiar with it. Um, but basically, when you cross compile for Go, it's uh, essentially quite trivial. If you're not familiar with this uh, syntax, um, you basically just do it as an environment variable, do go build, uh, you know, output if you want, process that, et cetera. And then you can also use the same thing to technically to build to iOS and Android. Um, that's a little more complex because you have to have the Android and iOS SDKs. And this was really a demonstration to show you what you can do right now. Go has had this really amazing cross-platform tool chain that's available for every installation, which means even if you're on Windows, even if you're on Linux, or if you're on OS X, you're able to simply cross-compile for another system so long as you don't have like a C dependency or something like that. Um, and, and that's really what's one of the greater things or more amazing things about Go in general. So similarly, oops, why is this not, okay. Similarly now, if you install the WSA enabled branch of Go, uh, you can build Go runtimes in the exact same way. Uh, and you can actually do a Go run and execute it using Node.js, believe it or not. Huh? That's actually funny, huh? No? All right. I think it's, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, so there is a, there is a go j underscore js wsam exec uh, that's included in the go branch. If you copy that into your path somewhere, and you can actually then do this, it's the go os js go arch equals wsam go run. I don't know how that got messed up. That should be all uppercase. Um, go run hello.go. Uh, by the way, so all of my code is online. It's available in these slides, and it all runs. It compiles. It, it all works. So uh, feel free to check out my slides from the uh, previous thing. It's uh, gophers.id forward slash slides. It'll just take you to the GitHub repo um, if you're interested in it. Uh, so this is all that you need to do now for this magic to actually build and run a, a web assembly with Go, right? Now, the next thing, the next difficult kind of task is getting this deployed inside of a uh, web browser, okay? This is all the HTML that you need to then execute that, hello dot, that, that generated hello.wasm file inside the browser. Uh, there's basically a, the WSAM exec.js that has to get included. This is essentially the compiled Go runtime that's been compiled to WASM. And then basically, uh, this is the standard off-the-shelf uh, prescribed way to, on how to load WASM. Uh, if, I don't know if you're front-end or back-end developers here, but if you know anything about this, uh, all it is is just essentially JavaScript. It's loading it using the, the standard thing. Um, and you're just basically calling the compile, which is a uh, inside of the WSAM exec, which is a, uh, it doesn't really do anything except it, it passes it on to the uh, WSAM uh, handlers, uh, the, uh, the generated WSAM. And then it loads it and runs it. 
uh, which then gives it, and it, it, this basically binds you to this, uh, uh, to this button, right? And then that basically, uh, when you click this button, it will actually execute this, and it will execute it, and it'll execute using the JavaScript console. You'll see the same hello message using the go os dot, you know, uh, sorry, the uh, runtime dot go os and runtime dot go arch uh, variables, right? Okay. All right, so if you wanted to simply run this and actually had a self-compiled package of Go, you could just use the http.dir to serve the active directory, uh, or sorry, your current, your current working directory, I mean. Um, and the real, the real thing that, uh, about my presentation, uh, about why I'm even bringing this up and demonstrating this and not going super into depth, is that I really want... What my, what my goal in general is with Go and like the community that I, I've been creating in Indonesia, and hopefully you guys are creating this here too, is to me it's more important at these meetups, or to do meetups like this, it's about getting people thinking about what's possible with this tool, with this, with this amazing powerful tool that's been provided to us. And there are things about this that, that really needs to like be talked about, about what is now possible. My prediction is, is that there will be in the near future, there will be a cross-platform UI now, right? That is like QuickTime, or sorry, not QuickTime. <laughs> I mean QuickTime. Ah, like QT, I don't know why I say QuickTime. I didn't mean that. Like QT, but like that actually is truly cross-platform because it actually compiles directly to machine code for every single programming language, okay? Uh, yeah, is that a question? Yeah, would you like questions in between or wait till the end? I don't really care. I, whatever, whatever's good for you is good for me. I was just thinking about, you know, what you do with it. And my understanding would be, and this is the question, is that right? That you can actually replace all the JavaScript libraries like AngularJS and stuff with an application that you write for Rasm, which can mm -hmm. interact with the dome of the browser mm -hmm. and the event model within the browser. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so WSM allows you to do that, and you can interface that with Go. What's missing right now is that there's not high level packages in Go that exposes that, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody would still have to do the low level <coughs> work to basically bind a common package for those other languages. But so for example, if you're familiar with like libui, which is that micro C UI framework, there's no reason why the, the Go UI package could not be you know, modified to work similarly with WSM for you know, connecting that. So yes, you could create a, a truly cross-platform you know, React Native you know, thingy that's written in Go, but that actually like compiles to native machine code and then compiles to WASM on, um, you know, for the browser, right? You could do that, yes, but I mean, that's a lot of work, right? And I mean, but the thing is, is that like, this is usable in other ways right now today. So I can tell you that <laughs> there's a very big, very, very large Indonesian company that is using Go on its web front end now, that's handling ba that's basically handling back end communication with its uh, you know with its uh, services. I know that because they basically paid me to build it for them. So <laughs> uh, I, I can't I can't really tell you, but there's only four Indonesian unicorns. You could figure out by their websites of those of those of those who have websites, right? <laughs> there's only two. Right, that have web that have web apps, right? So figure it out. All right. So, anyways, um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways, what's really cool about this is that because everything is now going to be able to be compiled to WebAssembly two, is that you'll be able to drag along using the LLVM compiler, uh, you know, or you know, tool chain. I should call it a tool chain, not really a compiler. Using the LLV VM tool chains, you know, Rust, C, C++ code, these can all now be targeted also for the web browser. And they can be used in the same way from Go code that's been compiled to WSM. 
So for instance, it, you know, TensorFlow could run natively inside the browser, right? If somebody did the work to make it, to, to get it there. And when I, when I say that, I don't, I, don't, I don't mean that like in an offhand, or say, oh, well, just go, you know, just go write that, right? Just go, just go write a rocket ship. That's not my point. My point is, is that the, the, the hurdle to jump is now, a, is now no longer, you know, seven meters tall. The hurdle to jump is now two inches tall, okay? Uh, or two centimeters tall, keeping with my metric theme. Um, so the point is, is that we're very, very close to that, and, and that's the thing. And, and what my whole thing is, with, this, with this presentation is really start thinking about this, because this is something that is super exciting to me as a developer. I've not been this excited about the possibilities of a programming language in like 15, 20 years. I mean, it's just been freaking forever for me that I've actually been excited about something in a, in a, in a, a truly new and unique way. Um, and so you, you'll get this, right? Yeah, I, I think we'll get there um, at, some, at some juncture. Well, whether or not the web matters in five years is a different question, but yeah, who cares? All right, um, so that's basically my presentation. Uh, oops. Uh, I have Go Jakarta stickers for you guys if you're interested in them, a little tiny uh, gophers. Um, and that's it. And then just a, a prayer for uh, developer CVs. Uh, we're hiring for all positions, uh, developers, front end, back end, whatever. We don't really, we don't use, we don't use WASM on our front end. We use, we use TypeScript, but, um, uh, we're looking for really amazing people. We're a hundred percent remote company. And so apply if you're interested. So, uh, I'm, I just happen to be in Indonesia because that's where I live. Okay. All right. Any questions? Seeing none. Maybe I have one bit more about the yes. uh, What about the comment object model? Uh, are you allowed to use it inside the uh, Golan source code? So yes, WASM can absolutely interface with the DOM. Yes. If you want it, if you didn't want to have it as like completely low level calls though, you would have to write some kind of high level like package. So Neelance, the guy that that did the port for the backend that compiles to WSM. He, he's actually the author of, is it, is it Gopher.js, I think? And they have a, uh, I imagine that his packages from Gopher.js will be moved over so that they can be used from the WASM uh, you know, build, essentially. Uh, but that, yeah, so the, the point is is that Yes, you can definitely interface with the DOM, but somebody would have to write a package, right? So, oh, my other, my other, my other message. So, if, so one of the things that I, I uh, why I, I wanted to do this with Indonesian developers is that, you know, in, Indonesian developers, their average age is like 17. I mean, they're super young. Um, one of the things that's been kind of disheartening for me as a developer, right, is, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not old, but I'm not young either. The thing is, is that every time I had a great idea, it turns out that Linus had already implemented it. So what was I, what was I supposed to do, right? Um, so one of the things is, is that like, if you want to make a name for yourself as a developer, you have a lot of great opportunity right now, right? There's a lot, there's a lot of work that can be done that's like easy, super easy to do. Like if you want to prove that you have coding skills, pick it, pick up, pick up that, you know, as an example, picking up the DOM and making like a high level, you know, Go package for working with the DOM would be a perfect way to show your skill set as a developer, right? So just keep in mind. Thank you. All right, yeah. So any other questions? Yes. What is it you hate so much about JavaScript and TypeScript that you're excited <laughs> about? I don't, I don't hate them. I, 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 I speak in hyperbole if that's not obvious, right? Um, no, I don't hate. I, I don't hate it. Uh, it's just that, like, I mean, it's if you've ever had to deal with Node.js and if you've ever had to deal with npm. I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know how many more left pad or right pad or or you know middle pad packages we need, right? So it's just. Uh, I think every programming language has its kind of like time that it's in the sun that it's like really amazing, and then eventually CPAN happens. And you know they all die, right? 
Is C Pan still alive? Sorry, C Pan. C Pan. So look, programming languages that were great that have all the same problems. Okay, I can name. I can name basically all of the uh, compile all all of the programming languages that exist that are that are popular have that same problem. It's basically package management, and it sucks. Which is really why I hope that Go never really has a true package management solution. I don't even want to talk about the philosophy of the new stuff that's coming in, but like every great programming language that that existed was great until you know the package it, the, until the community went out of hand with a bunch of crappy, badly written poorly written packages, right? So Perl is the first example, CPAN, you know, but look, Python, pip, easy install, whatever, you know, pip2, pip3, pip17, whatever, right? <laughs> uh, I mean, if you, if you are in the world of trying to build like correct, repeatable, you know, builds, which is what I have been doing forever, this is a problem, which is why a lot of people prefer C and C++ because there's never really been a package solution for C and C++. Um, I mean, but it goes beyond that, right? I mean, Ruby's gems are horrible, or Bundler. Bundler and gems is horrible. It's the same problems. Because it's not, so in my, uh, this is a philosophical question outside of the scope of tonight's discussion, but um, I, don't, I do not believe that it's fundamentally a, a problem that can be solved, which is why nobody has solved it, right? If it was solvable, it would have been solved a long time ago, right? But yeah. Uh, getting back to that question, I think something that, that strikes me again and again when I use Go is that this language was actually developed for the stuff that I want to do. It is <coughs> writing applications in the times of internet. Mm -hmm. And many of those other languages that we use, they were what? They were developed for something else. Mm -hmm. And then they just came to some fame because someone wrote a great library that you could use for it, and then it was kind of this I mean, Java was made for set-up boxes and coffee. Sure. <laughs> the, real, the only real application that, that so. Java has is Android. Right. That was intended to do stuff like that, but not big server uh, applications rolled on. Oh. I, I think I think Java was super popular way before Android, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, but you know, they changed their mind somewhere in between. They met with a guy who told them, "Hey, you should do this for the internet, not for the set up because they failed a few, a few uh, tenders that they applied for, right? Right. So then they had to rethink. Otherwise, the project would have been dead. Right. No. I, yeah. It's just. And then they were happy. And we said, "Oh, we're gonna integrate it this day." Everybody looks at it. Awesome. You should come do a presentation on why Go is awesome. For <laughs> hey, oh, so speaking of which, if you guys ever do come out to Jakarta and you want to do a presentation on Go, let me know. Uh, one of our hardest problems is getting screwed. So uh, please uh, draw me a line. My name is Ken Shots. I'm okay. not, I'm not, you, you know, check it's not hard to find your screen. So, I think I way 